Okay, I'd like to introduce uh, Jim Corr from the Chorus, the band The Chorus. Jim, thanks for being with us. Um, it's great to uh, finally sit you down and talking to you because we've seen each other a few times, but we haven't actually sat down. Last night you were on the Late Late Show and you never got the opportunity to talk about Ireland and the financial crisis. We'd love you to talk about it now. Can you tell us about what you were going to say in the show? Sure. Well, I was, um, I was hoping for a little bit more time to be able to air my views about uh, the financial crisis and the situation that Ireland is in at the moment. But uh, unfortunately, I wasn't really allowed to. I, I mean, I blurted it out tired to, kind of towards the end. Um, but uh, what, I, what I wanted to really talk about was that uh, how I believe that it, 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 based on historical precedent that what we're witnessing is an engineered financial crash an implosion of the world economy by, de by design, done through the central banks of the world, basically. As I understand it now, will, to understand this, first of all, we need to look at the Federal Reserve Bank in America, which is a private bank which is in private hands. And if you get behind uh, all of the, most of the central banks around the world, they're also private banks in private hands. Uh, people think that because the, the federal is, the word federal is in, uh, is in the, the uh, uh, what, the, what the bank is called, I think, is part of the government when it's, when it's anything but. They were blamed with the crash of 1929 because, uh, and by, by none other than the Nobel Prize winning economist Milton Friedman, because what they'd done is they'd contracted America's money supply by one third. They'd sucked mm. one, one third of the money that should be in the system out. Which is what's happening all the now at the moment. Oh, yeah, this is what has happened globally mm. uh, this time. And uh, why would they do that? Because you can engineer a depression then. Uh, and of course, if you uh, if you're in the know and you're behind these banks, you know what's going on, and uh, you warn your your uh, your boys, club your buddies, you get out at the top of the market before this happens, and then you wait a year, two years, three years, and you're able to get back in at the bottom of the market and buy up everything for cents on the dollar. Uh, that's that's a simplistic version of what is going on, there are other parameters to this as well. So, uh, and this is all outlined in an excellent documentary called The Money Masters by Bill Still, and how they basically do it, how the engineer booms and engineer busts. They do it primarily so that they can uh, shear, as in sheep shear, the wealth from the masses, and uh, also to, lead, to leave countries so, so crippled under inescapable debt that they're open to uh, vulture globalist bodies like the IMF, with the same people control, or the World Bank coming in and dictating terms on a loan that crucify and further impoverish the people of the country, and uh, the country's forced to sell off more of its natural resources. This is the name of the game. This is the scam. And what they're actually doing uh, through the federal, through the, the whole fractional reserve system, is printing money literally out of thin air. It's not backed by anything. It's not backed by gold or silver. And um, the banks are lending out money that they do not have through the fractional reserve system because they're allowed to, allowed to lend up uh, multiples of what they have actually on deposit. Mm. Uh, so when you go to buy a house and uh, you, know, you get a mortgage from a bank, that money never existed. It's they're, they're typing keys on a keyboard, trans, you know, mm. there's no, there's, you know, it's digitally... It's all bookkeeping, book as they say. Yeah. It's just a bookkeeping yeah. exercise. There's no actual money uh, taking, taking, um, taking place. So, so I believe that it's now happening on a global level, what they did in 1929, to cause the crash of 1929. And by the way, Ben Bernanke, uh, the, uh, the, 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 well, what is he, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, he, um, he actually admitted this in 2002 at a speech to honour Milton Friedman. He admitted it, and you can pull the quote up, it's up at the Federal Reserve's own website. He admitted that they caused the crash in 1929. He said, we're sorry, and thanks to you, we'll never do it again. Of course, they lied. Yeah. They have done it again. Um, the reason they do it is because they are able to uh, enact, basically, a, a massive transfer of wealth from the poor middle class to the super rich again. It's about vast wealth and uh, Plus power moving into yet fewer and fewer hands. Mm. Uh, we can see the same thing happening with uh, power, uh, which is we're, we're seeing the, the further centralization of power, uh, uh, not just in Europe but globally. And this is what their aim is to set up a, is a one world government, a one world government dictatorship, mm. uh, being run by unelected elites. Mm. Uh, that's the whole name of the game. So I, I was. Uh, I came out a couple of times in the radio, I explained what was going on, I warned the Irish people that, were, that this is engineered, 
Uh, this is designed to uh, affect corporate takeover of our, of our country. And we had a situation where our government decided to uh, take 34 billion of taxpayers' money and to put it into uh, Anglo-Irish Bank, right? What they did was they transferred private debt onto the shoulders of the Irish people. That money belongs to us. Mm. And um, the people they only recently came out who the bondholders were. Senator David Norris and the doll attempted to weed out who they were and he was silenced by the Kian Cola and told that it was not in the national interest. Can you imagine that? It was not in the national interest that the people of Ireland know where their money went. Okay. went to. We built out probably the richest family in the world, the Rothschilds, uh, who played an integral part in setting up the Federal Reserve Bank. They're behind the Bank of England, the Bank of International Settlements, the ECB, the IMF, the World Bank, behind everything. Uh, with the Rockefellers and the Wahlbergs and other elite international banking families. We bailed out the Rothschilds, we bailed out also Goldman Sachs who made a fortune from this engineered financial crash. And then the Irish government introduces austerity measures further impoverishing the people of this country. Uh, there are people in this country, uh, some probably watching this, this uh, Broadcasts at the moment who are uh, they don't know where they're going to get the money to to you know make it to the end of the month. They're afraid to put the heating on in, in the countries because of what the government has done. What they have, what the government has done is is completely criminal. It's uh, there's no other word to describe what they've done. There were other options that they could have taken. They could have followed Iceland's route. Iceland uh, is exiting the recession. Now what they did is they've uh, they they've burnt the bondholders. Uh, they're defaulting whatever debt they had, the original debt. They've said no, no to the EU and the IMF, mm. and they're exiting the recession. They've also got another, another lovely scheme in place where um, if, say, at the top of the market you bought a house for 200000 uh, and you committed to an 80% loan, even though the value of the house would have dropped to uh, uh, 100000 you still only have to pay 80% of the value, the current yeah. value of the house. Mm. So you have to pay the 80% of the 100000 mm. Lovely scheme. Uh, beautiful scheme, and uh, as I said, Iceland's on its way to recovery, but our government took another uh, completely different route. Uh, and it's it's very interesting that one of the retaliatory measures from the EU was to uh, block Iceland's fishing ma mackerel boats from landing at EU ports. Apparently, it doesn't matter much to them anyway, because most of their catch comes into mm. uh, Reykjavik and other uh, ports uh, around Iceland. So, so for so for the layman, the layman in the street who's not kind of into the financial side. If we break it down to simple terms, we take we get money off the uh, the IMF. <coughs> we some of that money goes to the bank, the bailout the banks, which means the money comes from our tax to pay for that money, and then the banks come along and take our house off us because we can't afford the mortgage. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic it's scheme. Isn't absolutely it? fantastic, isn't it? Uh, I don't know what foreclosures are at here. Unbelievable. Uh, are they? Unbelievable. Really? Yeah. Well, we're not hearing much about it in the media. I know that they're uh, at unprecedented levels over in the in the uh, in America. You see, what what they want to basically do is bring us back into a kind of a neo feudalist uh, mm. society, really, where nobody owns property. Yeah. That's what they're trying to do, uh, and well on their way to doing it. But the, the solutions are, we follow, follow Iceland's example, and also very important, and this is uh, hammered home in the documentary, The Money Masters, printing, printing our own debt-free money. Print our own debt-free money, like okay. Abraham Lincoln's greenback. Mm. Uh, that is one way, because we, we, we have to decentralise, we have to get away from the EU controlling our monetary policy, mm. controlling our money. Uh, that is the, that is the, the, the crux of the, of the problem. I don't know whether you, you heard that. I, I was talking to Ian earlier on. Um, I got a, um, a, an email in with, uh, it's in the media, that the ECB have allowed the Irish Central Bank to print 51 billion, yeah. um, which is um, counterfeit really, because there's no bonds to back it up. Yeah. yeah, That's incredible. So if all the countries could do that, we'd be out of debt quite quickly really, wouldn't we? Well, it, it creates inflation. I mean, it's going back to Germany. There'll be so much money in, the value, I mean, it's just the inflation go up. It's like um, Germany again in World War Two. that's what they did. Yeah. Um, so history, history is repeating itself. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, the whole monetary system is set up to ultimately benefit only if the few at the top controlling the system, mm -hmm. ultimately. That's what happens. 
and uh, so we need to we need to think of a new system. There are lots of great ideas, um, and uh, obviously one is printing our own debt free money. And you know, so what, I mean, what do you need? You need enough money in the system to facilitate trade, and then a little bit more, really. You know. Well, the, the, they say money is the way it's working now. It's kind of compounded, which means it has a finite limit. It can't go because the way I kind of explain it is that a hundred pound or a hundred euros today could buy you a lot more, or say a hundred pound, whatever, forty years ago than <coughs> what it could now. Mm -hmm. And if that carries on, then a hundred pound in forty years' time, a hundred years, forty years' time, you could buy a bag of sweets with it. So exactly. Well, the inflation is, is, is built into the system, basically, mm -hmm. and it's got, we're, we're dealing with co constant currency devaluation. Uh, that's built into the system mm. because uh, money actually equals debt. Mm. Money is debt. Yeah. Uh, so it's a very, very clever system that has been set up to benefit uh, just a few. And an awful lot of people are waking up to this scam. You know, so Massively. Yeah, yeah, which it's, is great. It's happening, it's happening big. And it's, it's great that, you know, myself and Steve have said on, on, on the show that um, you could have been easily sat back. You know, you, you've done the music bit and made a couple of quid and you could have said oh, I'm not going to say anything I'm going to just you know stay in my house and do what I do and not say anything but there's something inside you that made you that whatever it was I mean maybe you can tell us what what gave you this kind of anger or made you want to do something about this I mean you you obviously knew what you what would happen if you came out into the general public what what was that kind of that anger inside you that made you want to do, kind of get up and say something uh, hmm. It, I suppose it was a number of things. Well, first of all, I love humanity, mm -hmm. and uh, I hate lies. I hate deception. I hate abuse. Uh, I'm very much about truth, justice, and peace. Mm -hmm. I hate war. Mm -hmm. And uh, I suppose it was 9/11 that it was was what started waking me up. And it just when I started researching that, I just I, I found so many holes in the vision mm -hmm. story that it just could not have happened the way mm -hmm. they were told. Yet there was an excuse for launching a war on democracy in the West, and uh, worse for launching a war on two, two sovereign nations who had absolutely nothing got to do with 11. And to the subsequent deaths of an estimated conservative estimate, probably 1.5 million people. So uh, I just thought that was absolutely horrendous. I mean, the suffering that has gone on in Iraq uh, and Gaza, uh, we've no idea about, except for alternative news websites. Um, because the news media is controlled yeah, by yeah, Reuters, yeah. who is controlled by the Rothschilds, I believe it's the Rothschilds. Uh, or the as I understand it, the Rothschilds, uh, they only control Associated Press and Reuters. Yeah. And of course, most news agencies would probably rely on those two. Yeah, uh, they're fed the same stuff. Yeah. Well, here's, a, here's a trick that I do, and I don't know whether you've done this before. In bed in the morning, you've got your, your um, ITV news, yeah. and you've got your BBC. And if you flip between one and the other within five minutes of each other, guaranteed, and you're enough saying the same stuff, yes. the same hymn sheet, yeah. which is phenomenal. Now, yeah. something that I <coughs> want our listeners to understand, you're a qualified pilot, mm. and I've, I've got 22 hours flying myself. Not, I mean, you've done an awful lot to me on the flying side. So it's understandable, as you being a pilot and being qualified, that you've done all the training. So you have looked at the Pentagon crash, apparently the plane went in the Pentagon. And even crack military pilots have said they couldn't fly a plane to that level to go in the Pentagon. And I think it's important for people, because there's maybe listeners and people who don't know that you're a pilot, mm. 